you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn in the book of Genesis, chapter number 17. Genesis, chapter number 17. And I want to read a few verses from there. All right, when Abram was 90 years old and nine, is that old? Ninety and nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the mighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I'm going to make my covenant between me and you. And I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. And Abram, everybody say Abram. Abram fell on his face. And God talked with him and said, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you, and I'm going to make you exceedingly fruitful, and I'm going to make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I shall establish my covenant between me and thee, and your seed after you in the, in the generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Now go to Genesis chapter 24. Verse number 1, this is years later. Now he's not Abram, he's Abraham. It says that Abraham was old. Everybody say old. And well stricken in age. I'm feeling younger already. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham was old, well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Now, if you could think about that, that God out of nowhere in life, with no introduction, he didn't have the gospel, he didn't have stuff preached to him, just minded his own business, and suddenly God appears. And God says, I've got a covenant, I've already made it between you and I. He's saying that prophetically because he would cut that covenant, and the Bible said he would go through in those two forms over that offering that Abraham, had, Abraham would cut in half him, and he would make, that's how they made covenants, the partners would go through those, only he made Abraham fall asleep, a deep sleep, up, and he went with himself, and finding no greater to swear by, God swear by himself up, of this covenant. It's an unbreakable, everlasting covenant. And so he is saying prophetically to him, it's already done. Say, I'm too big for those situations. They're, they're never going to stop me. It's going to happen. And he said, listen, there's a covenant between you and I. You're going to have a seed, and your seed is going to also become nations. Whoa. And, and those nations are also going to have kings. And it's going to be an everlasting covenant. And there's going to be an everlasting blessing. And then it says he went through all of his life, comes to the end of his life, and and what is his testimony now? Uh, first of all, he is ancient of age, well stricken in age. Amen? That means uh, he certainly didn't die of anything that wanted to kill him or anybody that wanted him out of the way. They might be gone, but the old turtle's still moving along. Amen? All the, all the rabbits are dead, and he's still moving along, and he's there. And the Bible says this is his testimony. And the, it, what it showed was that the Lord had blessed Abraham uh, in all things. I mean, how, how would you like to have it said of you that God took you to old age, stricken in years, um, and the testimony of your life um, is that you were blessed um, in all things um, in your life. Um. Can I ask you, would your life be any different at that juncture if that was your testimony? Would your life be any different on the way to that juncture if that was your testimony? Would your life be any different right now if that was the life that you were going to live uh, that was going to produce that testimony that you would be blessed, uh, amen, in all things? How would your life be different uh, if you were blessed in absolutely 
all things. Did you hear what he said? He said, and God named him Abraham. Abraham, because his name wasn't Abraham. He said in chapter 17, his name was Abram. Everybody say Abram. His name was Abram. That was a prophetic name. Amen? It was a prophetic name. And uh, this name Abram being interpreted, Abram in the Hebrew, means to be a high and lofty father. You're going to be a high and lofty father. Now, he carried that name decade after decade. In those days, they named you after something special. Your name meant something. And they should be able to look around you or your life and see something about your life oftentimes that had to do with what your name was. And here's a guy that always came in. Who's this? This is the high and lofty father. Of. And decade after decade until chapter 17, here he, he shows up with that name. Uh, and how many people is he a father of? He, he has got exactly that many children. After all those decades up, but his name is still high and lofty father. And God said, I've got a covenant with you and I'm going to bless you. Uh, and he said, I'm going to give you a new name. When I bless you, it's not going to be Abram. But he says, your name is going to be Abraham, which is a different word. And it means literally, you're going to be the father, a lofty father of, of a large population. You're going to be the father of multitudes, uh, the father of a huge group. And, and, and God explained that. He said, you'll be, you, you're going to be called Abraham because you are going to be the father of many nations and kings. Uh, and you're going to be so blessed with a lineage uh, that nobody's going to be able to understand it, including you. You're going to be the father of multitudes, and then there's, there's going to be nations, um, and, and it's going to be a, a family like nobody's ever thought of having. Only one problem. Amen. He has no children. He's 90 years old. And the Bible says it, this is no special scientific special guy. It said that he was beyond his years, uh, and the gear, the gears, the mechanisms were no longer working. Uh, he was stricken in age and had no possibility of having a baby. And, of course, Sarah was well behind, beyond her age, the Bible said, uh, and she was beyond the age of being able to have children. So there was something that was needed that I mentioned that he needed a miracle for this to happen. All he had was a prophetic name, an appearance of God, and it didn't happen today or tomorrow. It would happen in years from now. God would come back and visit him and bless him and say, now is the time. And when we plug into him at this time when he's old and well-blessed, uh, amen, he still hadn't had those kids. Uh, and now God is going to say, and you are going to have the children, and, the, and, and you're going to be blessed. Uh, and you, it's going to come to pass right now. And, and Sarah's going to laugh and all of these things uh, during these chapters between 17 and, and 20. So he needed a miracle. He was old and barren, uh, and he didn't have kids, but he had a promise. Uh, and suddenly the promise appeared. When he was about 100 years old, the promise appeared, maybe 110. And, uh, and he had a miracle. It was a baby. He had a son, his beloved Isaac. That wasn't all. Then he found that through uh, God's blessings in his life that he would have eight more. Amen. Isaac would have eight more, nine more, and then ten more, and then, and then his grandson would have, Jacob would have a, a couple of more, and now he would have, it would go up to, now there's 12 of those, and plus Isaac, uh, and he's got 13. And then as time goes on, he lived a long time to be able to see uh, a, a lot of his family, but he goes on, and, and suddenly it, it goes on to the hundreds of uh, and, and at some juncture, he finally leaves this world, uh, but the promise of the covenant goes on, and it goes into thousands. 
and then as the time goes on, it becomes multitudes uh, and becomes a twofold seed. The seed, the Bible says, oh, I didn't tell you about this, but remember when I said uh, sands of the sea and, and stars of the sky? There'll, there'll be two different generations coming out of you. One shall be uh, Jerusalem that is below. Amen. That, that's Israel. The other would be Jerusalem, which is below, uh, above, which is the everlasting kingdom of Christ. Um, and the Bible says it'll happen through your seed, uh, which is Christ. Um, and through Christ's seed, uh, amen, comes us uh, by faith. We're connected through Christ back to Abraham's covenant. And we become, amen, uh, uh, the children of God and, and, and the children of, of mercy and also the children of the faith of of Abraham because we're the fulfillment of the promise of God. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger until today there are billions, billions of Christians and, 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 and Jews together that still are growing and multiply. Amen. In our church, we got we got lots of evidences of that. We had a lot in the last couple of years of of showers for these folks that are still multiplying and more come. And if they get saved, guess what? They're gonna they're gonna have it. And we've seen hundreds saved over the last five years. And guess what? Those were additions. Uh, amen. Or, or or adding back in wherever they came out of. Uh, amen. To this promise. Of God that listened, Abraham, I've got news for you. Uh, I'm going to change your name from father who has none, uh, amen, uh, to a father who's fulfilled his potentials, who has nations and kings, uh, including a king of kings uh, and an everlasting covenant. Uh, amen. He was well stricken in years, uh, and God had blessed him in all things. Uh, we ask ourselves, how come? I mean, why did God bless him? Why did he stop by there? What was there about this guy? What did he see in him? The Bible says at some juncture he looked at him and, and recognized by his, by his faith, I don't know what, if it was as of yet, but eventually by his faith uh, that he recognized that he had become righteous. Uh, and that means the Bible tells us in Genesis 15, 6, it says that he, he believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Um, later on, it says in the New Testament, and said that God preached the gospel to him. He wasn't there, but he looked toward the cross and he showed him the cross and he so, showed him the Savior. And he believed uh, and it was accounted unto him to right, as righteousness. And he became the father of our faith because he got saved. Amen. In light of uh, and in the waiting of uh, the promise of Calvary that was coming in his life. And so he was righteous. Is that why he was going to have all these promises and blessings all the way to the end of his life? Uh, amen. It seems so. Amen. But did you know that he also had a, another man with him out of his family as he traveled? And his name was Lot. It was his nephew. And the Bible said of Lot, Lot also was believing and righteous. Amen. It was counted unto him for righteousness. He had believed God also somehow in this. I don't know if Abraham preached it to him or what. I suppose it was him. So the second Peter chapter two verse seven says, uh, I mean, that God delivered uh, just, and what it says just, it means justified, uh, Amen, justified Lot, uh, Amen, who was righteous, uh, Amen. He said he he delivered him, uh, Amen, uh, though he was vexed uh, with filthy conversation of the wicked. That's what it says of him, righteous Lot. Uh, he was blessed of God. God delivered him. Uh, Amen. Though he was vexed with filthy conversation or lifestyle of the wicked. And so he was not blessed like Abraham. He was blessed by being delivered from the power of the darkness that had him in Sodom and Gomorrah. While Abraham was delivered unto all blessings in his life. So they had righteousness, but they had different results in their lives, though they were still both righteous. Um, and it said that that righteous man was, was living among them, amen, who vexed his soul. Uh, and it said in verse 9 that the Lord knows uh, how to deliver the godly out of temptations. You've heard that scripture. But did you know it's, it's two verses down and talking about one man whose name was Lot, uh, who he was 
he was godly, but he was in temptation. He was righteous, but he wasn't doing very well. In fact, he was he was sowing a lot of things that were bringing him a lot of trouble in his life um, and in his family and in his future and in his lineage and how he was going to live out the rest of his days until he got old. Um, and he wouldn't have the same promise or the same results as his uncle did uh, because he had got involved in things, but God knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Uh, that's the promise. We need to realize it's about Lot. So Abraham and Lot are both righteous. They're both believers, the Bible declares. Uh, but their lives and their blessings and their cursings, the things that, about their destinies are so different. Uh, their results are so entirely different. Uh, unto old age. They they leave two trails. They leave two separate histories, just like every person in this church can leave a different history, whether you've been saved for two years or ten years or just for ten minutes. Um, so different. Why did they leave those two histories? Um, as the uncle and nephew, the answer was they lived different kind of righteous lives. That's what happened. They lived different kinds of righteous lives. And that's why. We ask ourselves, well, why did they do that? Amen? They left different epitaphs when they died. We ask ourselves, why did they do that when they both had the same potential? The epitaph of, of Abraham is he was very blessed all the way to the very end. The epitaph of Lot that we remember is he got very lost. And Lot lost a lot. It's a play on words on purpose. Lot lost a lot. Um, he didn't lose a little. Amen. He lost a lot of blessings um, in his life, even though he was righteous, um, even though he was God's, um, even though he was right next to Abraham, the father of our faith, got the gospel from him evidently. Amen. But he still lost a lot of blessings. Um, and the real question is not why did that happen, not necessarily how did it happen, but it's to understand when it happened. When did that happen? I mean, these guys were both going together. What was the pivotal moment when they parted company? What happened? We recognize that as two righteous guys, both believers and God had a lot in common. They were a church together. God had largely blessed both of them. They were actually ha having parallel histories that they were creating. And the Bible says by this time, uh, they both had large blessings. The Bible says they both had large flocks. They both had large businesses. They both had large employees, a lot of employees. And right about that time, the Bible says the employees begin to argue back and forth that you know, all of our sheep or cattle can't get enough to eat and drink because you guys and yours are coming in and, and, and pushing into our territory. And they begin to argue. And at that junction in time, um, the Bible says that we begin to see them part company and, and, and they have two different hearts that, that part their company. Um, uh, they have two different priorities in their, in their lives. They have two different uh, uh, choosers that are making two different uh, choices. And the results that they choose, um, history tells us, is like night and day. Like night and day. How many know that the choices that you have describe your priorities? Did you know that? Don't tell me that you're all this, that, the other. Just let me watch your choices. I'll tell you. I'll give you the answer. Amen. In fact, you know, um, the youngest believer in the church will give you some of those answers. They're real plain to see. Yeah? Amen. You can see them by your choices. Your, your choices uh, show us your priorities and they show us your paradigms, how you live, why you live, what you live, what's important for you. And, and they show your faith uh, and, and your righteousness. Uh, and, and they create in you this condition. Today, your choices have created in you a condition. Every one of you is in a condition because, uh, as a righteous person because of your choices in your life. Amen. And, and you're in that condition, and your condition, uh, amen, proves um, what your choices are. Today, 
the Bible says that we're all saints. Did you know that? In the Greek, that's hagios. It means you're holy. Every one of you is holy. When God talks to you, even on your worst day, you are still his saints. You are still the holy of God. Question is, how are your decisions going? Are you living up to your title, Abraham, or now Abraham's seed? Are you living up to your holiness? Are you living up to your godliness? Are you living up to your promises? Are you living up to your prophecies? Amen. The call of God is there. But your choices uh, describe your paradigms, describe your values, describe your heart. Uh, and, 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 and your condition confirms uh, what your choices are in your life. Are they righteous choices or are they unrighteous choices? Are they Absolutely, without righteousness in your choices. Anybody ever know anybody that was a Christian? But the condition of their life suggested they had no righteous decisions going on any longer in their life. And they didn't have to tell you. You just have to be around them for a while and watch. And you knew something had happened in their choices in their life. Your choices create your conditions. Your choices pave the way towards your destiny. That's what happened to Abraham. That's what happened uh, to Lot. Um, and, and they either pave you toward your blessings um, and your promises um, and God's covenants uh, and God's awards and rewards, or your choices uh, lead you away from those blessings and away from those promises and away from those inheritances and away from those riches uh, in the days of your life between now and when you're old. Amen. Um, and, and, and you can't hide the choices. They're, they're like DNA. You know, they got markers that are very, very apparent that say, mm, 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 no, no, that was not a righteous condition. This is not a righteous result. Amen. Uh, your choices have not been righteous. It's like somebody comes in and they shouldn't have been practicing something. And, and you can tell by the odor of them, uh, it's, it, you know, it's going on. I remember... At, we were trying to help a guy that was an alcoholic, and man, because we loved outreach, and so we found a God. I'd met him, and and he was a, he came to church, and he was about he looked like kind of like Rick, big tall guy, big long arms, and uh, you know, as I would try to sing, uh, he would say the words right after me because he didn't know a word I was saying, so he'd sing the words right after me and stick his hands way out there. And one night I had my uh, my uh, assistant pastor's wife was leading the songs and. And uh, he started doing all that kind of stuff. It completely threw her off. Uh, I closed my eyes and just tried to concentrate on praising the Lord. Um, and and, and, and uh, I looked up, and she was gone. Amen. She was gone. She could not take it. She was going to either uh, crack up uh, or do something wrong, and she just left. Uh, and there was nobody up there leading worship because he was there. And, then, and you could tell where it was because he had an odor about his life. Uh, and I said, Rick, next time what you need to do is you need to go and when you get to, to get some free clothes, get some nice-looking clothes that you can work in. This guy was strong. He didn't need to be in this condition. And, and, uh, and, and he had this odor about his life. And I said, you know, I have to be honest with you. You stink. I mean, somebody's got to tell him. There's a reason why everybody's going away from you. And, and if you'll just clean up, you know, you're a young, strong man. You can go places and... Get a white shirt, get some something on that you can go and apply for a job. And some months later, I, I saw him, and he had a Bible under his arm. And I, I looked at him, and I looked at his shoes in a parking lot, and I said, I, I see different shoes than the clothes. So I looked around at him. I said, that's Rick. Man, he's all cleaned up. He says, hi, Pastor. He says, you know, I'm serving the Lord now, and I got a job. We're building a home for people up in the mountains, and it's a Christian organization. And he had his little shirt on like I'd asked him to do, and he got a job. He's doing great. And, but on the way to that one day, we decided to take him some pots and pans. He had a little trailer by another little tiny trailer, and both of them were tiny. And so my brother and I went over there to deliver them and got in there and just was a bed and maybe a little TV, and like nothing. That was the whole world. Only I noticed over next to his bed was this quart of beer that was empty. Big thing, whatever that is, big thing. And uh, he saw me looking at it. He says, oh, that's my neighbor from this other trailer. I keep telling him, do not do that stuff around my trailer. And I thought, well, 
but she's trying to get it straight, you know, or protect it. After a while, we walked outside, and we were talking, and I said, Rick, there's one thing you have to know. We're here, and we're behind you. But I said, I'll never give you, we'll never give you money again. Not ever. Will you get money from us? If you need us to buy something, we may do it. If you need some help, we may do it. But I'm not going to do that. He said, why? I says, because you're drinking. You're spending money on alcohol. He says, no, no, pastor. He says, that's my neighbor. My neighbor's doing it, and I'm trying to tell him. I says, Rick, tell me this. Tell me how this miracle happens, that your, your neighbor drinks the beer, and I smell it on your breath. Can you just tell me that one thing? <laughs> he hung his head and he says, all right, Pastor, amen. And later on I saw him and he, God had blessed him. But you know what? Our, our, our life, like DNA has markers when we make the right choices and has markers when we make the wrong choices. And Abraham's choices set up righteousness in his life and destiny. Remember, he chose to, to make peace with Lot at this juncture. Uh, not to make war. He's the elder. He could have said, listen, I am the elder, and I'm the one with the promise of God, and you'll take that, and I'll take this. He said, no. You, he said, you go ahead and, and, and pick the best, uh, whatever you like, and I'll take the other. Amen. He made righteous choices. He chose to step aside and, 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 and take the lesser and have God maketh the greater. Amen. And he was greater to his old age. So they both were righteous, but their cho cho choices, I'm sorry, we're defining their destiny, amen. And you, you know the choices of Lot, amen. The Bible says uh, he had a series of choices. And it says in one place that he pitched his tent. This is way out there with Abraham and the group. He pitched, pitched his tent so he could see Sodom, amen. And when you pitch your tent towards some place, uh, there's a reason for that. Amen. Your DNA is showing through. Your choices are showing through. When he got up in the morning, he could still see the place. He could smell the food they were cooking down there that they didn't have. Um, at night, he could he could hear faint sounds of the parties and all that stuff and, and, and see the lights twinkling down there around Sodom and Gomorrah. It, it was an unrighteous choice. Amen. It, 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 it was the aim of a, a, a sinful flesh. Amen. And, and, and later on, he, he picked a, a place and, and he pitched, pitched toward there when he was closer. And, and then he, he, because he was pitched toward there and saw it enough, he finally decided to move in. The Bible said he went ahead and moved down there. And why not? There was an apartment open. Amen. Uh, can you believe that? This has got to be God. An apartment was open in the best part of Sodom. Uh, and I got it for a good price, you know. And, and I, I didn't have to pay. God bless me. I didn't have to pay the cleaning deposit. Amen. Uh, and this got to be God. Amen. He had the lust of the eyes. And then, then came that lust of the flesh. He had, to, he had to have it. So he made unrighteous decisions. And and, 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 and he'd already picked the well-watered plain, and, 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 and he, he took the selfish route, amen. And finally, he set up his house in an evil neighborhood, amen. It was evil. No matter what he said, no matter how he tried to build this thing up, it was evil. And it didn't smell right. And uh, while he was there in that unrighteous choice, he, he set up his house there, and and then he let his wife affiliate with the people of the town. Amen. Now you know what happened with that story. She began to fall in love with the folks and the lifestyle and the culture. He could have had a wife for a long time. Amen. He could have had a different testimony. But he made choices. And those choices caused him finally, amen, to keep his daughters in an evil atmosphere. Of where sexuality and evil sex was was the order of the day and just accepted, amen. And so that finally, when God brought him out of there, uh, his daughters, having lost his wife, and his daughters decide that they knew a lot about sexuality, and they're just gonna have sex with dad because that way they'd do the right thing and, and they could have a seed because there's nobody else around for the family. And in sin, and, and they mo he made uh, Moab and, and Ammon, I believe what it is. So the Moabites and the Ammonites, uh, they came out of that seed of a wrong decision. Amen. And, and you study the results. Amen. Our choices have results. So 
You can choose the, the greater destiny or you can choose the lesser destiny. The greater inheritance or the lesser inheritance. Or you can choose no inheritance at all. Even as a righteous person, that's the message of, of God. A wise man said, sin's going to take you farther than you wanted to go. It's going to keep you longer than you wanted to stay. It's going to cost you more than you ever thought you were going to have to pay. Isn't that the truth? Choices do that thing. Amen. When you, when you make a wrong choice for sin, even for the righteous, it will take you farther. It, it, it'll keep you longer. It will cost you more than you ever thought. And I can tell you after about 41 years now of ministry, I've seen this over and over again. Our choices pave the road of our destiny to old age. You've heard me say before, Anne Frank, having seen this German monster that appeared that used to be just regular neighbors and regular people before she, they were carried away and caught. Huh? She penned in her diary, looking at, at the results there of this evil roundabout her and the hiding they were having to do and, and all of the things of the Holocaust. She said, she wrote down, first we make our choices. And then, this is a teenager, and then our choices make us. Amen. She was so right. Amen. First we make our choices. And then they make a, a change in our heart. That's what happened to Lot's choices. Amen. He was captured by four kings, and then Abram, Abraham came and bailed him out of it. And guess what he did? He went right back down into Sodom and went right back down to the midst of it uh, because you couldn't get the Sodom out of him. Now, you might get him out of Sodom, but you couldn't get the Sodom out of him. And it cost him his home, his business, his wife, amen, uh, later his daughters, his reputation, uh, and his family. And though he was called righteous Lot, uh, he made choices, uh, amen, that caused him uh, to inherit conditions uh, that did not even replicate righteousness whatsoever at all. Until today, when I ask you about righteous Lot, what can you tell? What, what comes to your mind when I say righteous Lot? What stands out when I say righteous Lot? He was righteous. The Bible says so. What stands out about his life? Anything for you? The answer is no, because that's his. DNA, that's his markers, that's his reputation, that's his results because of his choices. Um, when I say uh, Abraham, I, I say, first of all, Lot was no Abraham, that's for sure, because look at Abraham. Abraham's life says blessings uh, all the way to the end. Uh, amen. The father of our faith, uh, the seed of Christ, uh, amen. A beloved of God, uh, a wonderful man to follow. David, you know, had a plan how to take care of this. Uh, because he read about these things, I'm sure. And he wrote down a plan on how to think right thoughts uh, and keep your mind in the right place. Uh, very first psalm, very first song, psalm means song, they sang these psalms. Uh, very first one ever wrote said what? Blessed is, uh, uh, like my father Abraham, blessed uh, is the man who, listen, walks not uh, in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen nor stands in the way with sinners or sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. He's made some choices. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And the blessings of God shall come to his life. And, and he's going to have a report like righteous Abraham uh, that even when his days are done and old, despite the failure in the middle, uh, he will always be remembered as the king that was the apple of God's eye, the worshiper that worshiped with all of his heart, uh, that did not lead Israel to sin, but led Israel toward the blessings of, of the worship of, of Almighty God. Amen. Um, our, uh, our choices, of uh, amen. Uh, uh, affect our lives and our, our decisions on meditations and our decisions on how we're going to face life and, and what we're going to follow and what our paradigm is going to be, uh, amen, makes a huge difference in our destiny and in our roads uh, that, we, that we go on. And, and actually, uh, it starts the cycle of our blessings or it ends the cycle of our blessings. It all comes back to our choices, amen, the choice of, of righteousness is really begins like like David did, like Abraham did. Is it, it was a choice for God. That's what it really is. Uh, the, the best choice we make is the choice to choose God. 
and we just settle it. Amen. I, I chose my wife, and I settle it. No other females, no other ladies, no other. I don't need a harem. I chose. Had I not chose her, I would have chose somebody else, and they would be it. But I chose her, and I've stayed faithful to my choice. And I have. I got blessed. Wow. Still getting blessed. 42 years, 41 years later, I'm still blessed by my choice. And I'm thankful she made a choice also. See, she chose to choose me and frame it around me. And that's what we do with God. We choose to choose God. That's the decision that leads to all the blessed decisions we'll ever have after that. We just choose, amen, to serve him. Because, listen, when you choose to choose him and you choose his word and you start looking at him in John 3.16 and, and the blood of Christ and God turn his back and his, his everlasting arms and his inheritance and, and the wedding and all the blessings of God, what happens to you? It changes your heart. Uh, when it changes your heart, you start loving God. And when you love God, guess what? You're going to make good choices. What did they say? What did Jesus tell them about how to make it through successfully in life and into eternity? He says, listen, here's the answer. It's twofold. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and strength. Make that choice. And then choose to love people as you love yourself. He said that will take care of all the law, all the prophets, everything you're going to ever need, all the way to your old days and into inheritances. Uh, you'll have blessings, but you've got to choose to choose God and choose uh, to choose the blessings of the Lord and choose, uh, amen, to love. Because uh, love covers um, a multitude of sins um, by changing our hearts so that we don't want to sin. Changing our minds so we don't desire to do that. Changing them, amen, uh, the borders of, of our morality so that we don't even entertain that. We don't put our, our, our tents towards Sodom. We don't get a little closer. We don't make unrighteous decisions. We don't go into that town. We don't rent a place there. We don't start lying and say, God's making this thing great. No, no, no. We'll stay like Abraham. Oh, we, we may not have the best party going, uh, but we got the best life going, uh, and when all is said and done, we'll have the best epitaph uh, and the best blessings. I, I, I'll be excited, I think, to see Abraham up there, just see the guy that started this all with his simple faith uh, in God and his choice. I saw his choice, amen, to take his son's life, his only son's life, and God said, whoa, whoa, stop, 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 I'll take care of it. I'll take care of the sacrificing of the son. It's okay, but now I know, amen, that you are really after me. Why, I saw your choices, amen, come out. I, I, I can smell the fragrance of, of what your life is really like. And he was blessed not just to be a father or a father of nations, amen, or a father of a seed, but he was blessed to old age beyond those things that would be coming in eternity. The Bible said still what he had, amen, was evidence of the fact that God was blessing him. He was blessed in all Thanks. Amen. And uh, when, when we hear a lot, we don't think about those things. But when we hear about Abram, we think about those things. And, and that's the real message of God tonight as I close. And that's simply this. God wants Abraham's blessings for us. You may not realize it, but you have a mark on your life. You're Abraham's seed. Did you know that? Amen. What does that mean? It means that including Christ, you get the promise of blessings that came to Abraham and his seeds and his seed seed and the seed as the stars of the sky and the, and the sand, not only in population, but in the level of blessings. I have not seen and ears not heard. It hasn't even entered in the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those that love him. Those that have chosen to choose God inside of their lives. All of his blessings hinge on your personal choices and your, church, your personal paradigms of how you're going to lead your life. Because when you're done, your account is going to be invested in and grow a great interest of inheritance and rewards and blessings. One little offering at a time. One little offering at a time. What you decide to sow in a little seed, I'm glad there's no great big seeds in general for most things. Little seeds. What you sow in a little seed, amen, will shall bring forth fruit and you'll sow that. And this seed you'll sow. 
And the Lord said, by the way, let me tell you how to make this right. In the decisions of the seeds that you sow, do not sow your treasures on earth where moth can corrupt, where the canker worm can come in, and rust can devaluate that thing, and, and, and then in eternity it's worth nothing anyway. You don't have those things. Abraham was, was blessed but because that was not his priority. He says, but listen, you build up your, your savings, your treasures in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, understanding what that place looked like, he says, because I know up there the moss can't get there, the rust can't get there. Nothing will corrupt it. It's going to multiply. And wait till you see how big your nest egg is when you get there and God gives you that and all of the entrance, the interest. All you've got to do, amen, you're called. It's in your DNA, amen. It's the predictor of your, your potential blessings. So, and they're all yours. Just decide for God and make your choices based on that decision. Loving God, loving others, delighting in the Lord, delighting in the Word, trusting in Him, looking past the things you can get now to the things that you'll have forever, and live at peace and rest. My wife says some people are poor, and they're just absolutely blessed anyway. Somebody said that in Africa, amen, and, and it's true. And besides that, God will also bless your finances. If, if, if you are worthy to carry a blessing... Um, Amen. Don't be surprised if God drops it in your life. If you can't handle it, he's not going to give it to you. If you can't handle power, don't, don't, don't think he's going to make you a leader because he doesn't want to see you hurt or other people's hurt. But if you can handle that, he's got plenty of spaces. Amen. God has blessings uh, that you have not even thought about uh, beyond your, uh, your, your, your greatest imagination. Amen. It all begins by our choices. Let's build our treasures. Uh, in heaven with God. Can you say amen?